Hey everyone, welcome to the 31 day build challenge. This is the official launch day, day one in December. I think now this is the third one, so this will make the third annual challenge. And what the challenge is, is I'm inviting you to basically try to do something, something every day on your project. There's 31 days in December, so you've got 31 days to get a jump start into your New Year's resolution of getting your aircraft done. We're just going to start a whole month early. So how this works is I created a group on Facebook. I know not everybody likes Facebook, including myself, but it's a good free place to upload pictures and especially video. We have kind of a motto with this challenge of say it with video. So I'd like to see you guys post lots of video. If you want to start out with a uh, quick shop tour showing the area that you're building at and then of course what you are in fact building. Um, but yeah, if you go over to um, Facebook and search Experimental Aircraft Channel Group, that is where everybody is going to be posting. And I don't care if you're a Zenith or a Rans or a Kit Fox or a Long Easy, everybody's welcome. Everybody's invited to post in the same place so we can share this throughout the year, actually, but especially during this challenge. All right, so if you're brand new to this this year, let me catch you up to speed. Let me get you up to speed on where I'm at with this. I'm building a Zenith. It's a CH750 cruiser. It's not the stole, although it performs, supposed to perform pretty well with this wing. So it doesn't have the slats, but it still takes off and lands in a good uh, distance. And in fact, over the years, I've kind of decided to make a little bit of a change. This officially initially came with the 5x5 about that size of a tire and I decided to upgrade to a 21 inch tire um, and a turf tire in the front. Just want to go visit you all if you have your own private little grass strip that I don't catch a wheel and a gopher hole somewhere and anyway I decided to upgrade that so it's a little bit of a mix of a cruiser. And again if you're not familiar with uh, the Zenith line of aircraft um, one of the reasons why I chose them initially is that they're one of the few manufacturers that also provide as an option to build from plants. Uh, and to that, I actually ordered the tail kit as a kit because I didn't see much advantage, both time or money, except for actually saving a little bit of time on scratch building the, the uh, tail kit. So I built that part from a kit. And then the wing section, I built every last part from raw materials. So uh, back to the fuselage, there's been a couple years of this going on. I want to catch up on time wise, so I spent the money uh, to catch up and the fuselage and finish kit is in fact a kit. All right, so moving right along so I can bring you guys up to speed where I'm at so I can get back to work on my own project because I've got a lot of work to do over the next 31 days. Where I'm focusing on right now is the interior. As you can see, it doesn't look like much. In fact, if you were to rewind and check out a few videos from last year, you'd say, Brian, what have you been doing all year? I've been focusing on uh, the interior bits and pieces, the cabin frame, um, pretty much everything is nearly done. Um, I've got the, the seat pans. Um, basically, what I have to do is just a couple little pieces to cut to trim that's actually already drilled out. Um, so I'm focusing on that. I'm going to do one last final fitment of all the interior metal, which is on the ground, and I'll show you that in just a second, because the very next step for me is to paint. I've talked to many people that have built these, and everybody pretty much suggests if you can just go ahead and prepare and prime and paint now, that way you can just throw everything into it very quickly, not have to bolt everything in, make sure it fits, then take it out, then clean, prime and paint. So this way, I'm kind of hopefully speeding up the process a little bit. All right, so now we're mobile. So you can see I've got the uh, pilot uh, seat base in and had the trim basically where it meets up against the side there is do a little bit of trimming. Uh, the other side of pretty much nearly ready to go. I've got that on the table back there. So what I decided to do on here, you can see these ribs that have been removed and there's a new set of ribs under here is uh, Zenith has a sliding seat option. So I removed those ribs and installed the new ones which are basically the same place that the seat rails bolt to. So there's two there's two ribs, one forward and one aft. And I'm actually considering, since there's holes both in the floor and up here, of going ahead and just, I'll be cutting 
through a lightning hole, unfortunately. But going ahead and putting this rib in here as well, just to fill the holes and stiffen it up a little bit. But here is the seat pan that I'm working on. You can see I got a rough cut right there to clear the side on the Longeron. Uh, you, you actually have to cut off probably in the neighborhood about an eighth inch to a quarter, depending on where it it sits along the side there. They won't they won't actually just drop in. And then right after that, I'll be assembling the seat frame, which is probably just an evening job. And then back to all the metal parts that I mentioned on the interior. So that is basically the luggage area there. Well, pretty much all that is luggage area, but that's the, the luggage floor, um, the center console, if you will, the two vertical pieces that go up and cover your push-pull uh, tubes for your flapperons and so forth. So they just need to be scuffed up, primed, and painted. And then, of course, they're going to be painted, and then I'll be riveting them in place later, and the rivet heads won't be painted. But I'll either live with that, or if I want to get really detailed, go back with a paintbrush and uh, paint the heads on the rivets, but I'm not sure that I'll do that. Hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com Avionation at AvionationUSA.com Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Okay, on over to the other workbench here. So, um, as you probably are well aware by now, I'm working with Dynon. Um, we're working together to promote aviation, and I really like their products. So. Um, yeah, we're going with them for the avionics and instrument panel. Doing a, a dual 10 inch Dynon screen. So we've got a backup, plus we could run, you know, nav on one and flight instruments on the other, or, you know, switch back and forth. But this is a pretty simple layout, right? Um, going away from the uh, old fashioned gauges, which I've considered using, but I think we're going to just keep it simple. I am going to go ahead and do an old-fashioned compass you know just just in case and just to have that there but this is essentially what my layout will be for my instrument panel now I'm not sure exactly this area just yet uh, because I'm using an engine with a carburetor and we'll talk about that for a minute of having the mixture dead center easily accessible from pilot or co-pilot or doing the throttle and uh, mixture here, throttle and mixture. But I do know that throttle is going to be here and there'll be one on either side so pilot and co pilot can reach it. Um, you know, the, the mixture, how often do you use that, you know, in flight? And it's not that big a deal to reach across the instrument panel. So throttle, trim, flaps, and then most all the switches, I did opt to get the center console, which is right there. So I will be installing most all of my switches below the instrument panel here. That way it'll keep the panel pretty clean and everything will be accessible right there, including in the flat part there, I will have my um, fuel tank selector valve. Also just a quick mention, um, also not a secret that I'm working with AirTech, AirTech Coatings, who does uh, fabric coverings and paint, paint and primer. So I've got a small sampling here, just enough essentially to do my interior because that's what I'm working on right now, of primer um, and actually got some gray paint over there in the box. But I'll be honest, I haven't used the product yet, but I've seen it. And what I've seen so far, I really, really like. Um, it is not a, a base clear. It's a, it's a single 
color. Uh, it is more like an epoxy paint. You have to mix the uh, catalyst and um, so forth into it. But it is such a deep, deep, wet paint look. I've seen it on several aircraft and I just, I know it's gonna look good. Now I haven't painted an entire airplane before. I've painted a few parts here and there. I've painted an entire car. Um, came out pretty decent, so I figured that I'll try my hand at this. Why not, right? We're trying everything else here in aviation and building airplanes. So yeah, this will be using is the AirTech Coatings um, products on the interior. And we did kind of a, kind of a custom gray I did a little bit of a sample. It's 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 a bit of a, a slight blue hue gray, but that'll be the whole interior. Uh, I've seen obviously lots of different interiors and smaller spaces. I'm not saying that this is a small cockpit zenith. It's actually pretty wide, but just in general, small spaces to me do better with lighter colors. It makes it feel a little bit roomier versus a really dark dark gray or black. So I'm going to go with a really light in my cockpit. All right, since I'm standing right here next to what's on the shelf here anyway, and if you're, you're brand new to this, let me get you up to speed. For everybody else that's been around for the last three years, you know what I'm about to say. Uh, so the power plant, the, the engine that I'm choosing to use is not the mainstream options. Um, this is a cylinder of a Franklin engine. Uh, you can see the cooling fins. It has quite a few cooling fins. Um, so what I'm choosing to use for mine, which is very unique, I know, um, is the A, the O235 Franklin Sport 4. And why I'm choosing this is that it's still available. Um, Chris over in Bruton, Alabama at Airworks is going to be building this up. Well, in fact, I think it's end of January, February. We'll get together, build this engine. But the, um, the Sport 4 Franklin is a four-cylinder and it weighs roughly the same roughly the same as an O200 but puts out between 125 to 130 horsepower so i figured an O200 puts out about 100 horsepower probably a little bit less from what i hear and having something that puts out that much more i think it would be really great having that kind of climb performance um, with this engine so that's what I'll, I'll be using is the Franklin, and we'll have a whole, uh, several episodes on the build process of that coming up uh, early next year. So the other part of an interior is the interior, right? And what I chose for that is actually out of Wisconsin, very popular, ever popular, Flightline Interiors, which I just received that box about a month ago. I think it was um, approximately seven to eight month lead time at the time. I'm not sure what it is right now. She might be up, Abby might be up to about uh, maybe even a year. I don't have to check in with her. Um, I'd love to show you the interior because it really came out very nicely, but I kind of want to wait till a little bit later on. I'm still trying to uh, pin down my exact paint scheme, which is going to go along with that. But I'll let you know at this moment, at least that I was originally go with some really bright colors. I'm a big fan of anything exotic or fun of bright colors like metallic yellow or greens or reds. Um, there's gonna be a hint of red in this, but we decided, my, my family, uh, we decided that we should go ahead and stick with the colors that we've got going on with the Experimental Aircraft Channel, which is white, red, and black. And there's probably gonna be a little bit of silver in there for the white, because white is just such pure white. So that will be the color scheme of this at the moment, unless something changes last minute, but I hope not, because the, the seats have some red accent in it. Uh, the seats are red and black, just to give you a little bit of a spoiler on that. Uh, but I'll re reveal that a little bit uh, more in the future as we get going on with this. All right, well, I hope you know what the 31 day challenge is all about now and I've brought you up to speed where I'm at with uh, my project. I don't care if you've been doing this for 10 years or you're starting today, you're welcome to join in. And remember, if you could, we all love video, right? I, I hope we love video. When you make a post, say it with video. Give us a quick tour of your shop, walk around kind of like what I did here tonight, and just pan around showing us what you're working on, what you've been working on, what you're about to work on. We'd love to see it. It's very encouraging. I know it, it has been for me especially over the years to see what other people are working on and see how their garage space, their workspace is laid out. Um, 
it's very inspiring to see other people's work and that they're getting stuff done. And that's the whole point of this is to keep us all motivated and inspired because this is a this is a big task. This is a monumental project. Not everybody builds an airplane, right? So let's work together to get all of our projects, really get some momentum going on before 2022, and maybe we can all fly together next year. And as far as my schedule goes, I'm gonna try to post on Facebook in the group every day, and on YouTube, I'll come back and do a weekly update on, on YouTube.